I got asked recently what my favourite type of video game is, and it's something I think I've only just recently figured out for myself. You have your spectacle sci-fi shooters like the Doom reboot and Halo, your turn-based strategy like XCOM and Gears Tactics, immersive story-driven experiences like Metro. For all the times I've tried to get into roguelikes, I just don't seem to be able to. And that goes the same for Dark Souls games too. While not all the games I mentioned have it, something I do love is the feeling of being a part of something greater, a solid team. A power fantasy is lovely, but I like being able to work with people. Not necessarily real people, but a unit. Squad controls are something that every video game that includes them seems to just be attempting, and I don't think we've had an installment produce a bunch of copies, like what happened with the likes of Halo and Dark Souls and Metroidvanias with their respective mechanics. Usually I'm very, this is wrong, or this is amazing about specific titles on this channel, but what I want to do today is explore how different video games allow you to control squads, what issues always seem to prop up, and whether any game has actually nailed it. While turn-based games have obvious advantages, my main focus here is on everything else, specifically third and first person shooters. There are some goodies here, and some interesting hiccups that are still present now, but honestly, I haven't talked about video games here for a while, so here we are. Let's talk about some games. I want to make a distinction here. I'm not talking about companions. Squad mates are characters who have similar, if not all the same capabilities as you, other than being controlled by an AI as opposed to another player. Elizabeth and Bioshock, teammates in GTA, and anyone else who isn't capable of holding their own without your help doesn't really count. Turn-based games technically allow you to control everyone, so if I count them as squad mates, then that either means there isn't a player character, or they're all player characters. Squad mates are an extension of the person holding the controls, like a team is a single unit. If one part of it fails, then the whole thing collapses. A lot of games seem to vaguely introduce the idea of commands, but try not to let it get in the way from any of the other game systems. A lot of first person shooters add this in as an addition that almost seems like an afterthought. Halo has been a series that has focused on being a power fantasy. While allies can help you out, and you know, can swap some weapons with them, they're there as cannon fodder, or to drive you around, or though you might not want that to happen. Halo 5 attempted to do something different though. Slightly. While previous games have leaned into the more narrative side of being part of a team, Guardians attempts to make the gameplay reflect that as well. But in single player, you're given the ability to tell the AI what to do, with a lovely little press of a button. On my mark. Copy that, lock. Want your squad mate to go here? Push the button. Want them to get in a vehicle? Push the button. Want them to pick up a gun? Try 50 times before you actually select the right one. Want to be revived? G yeah, nah, that's probably not going to happen. While Mass Effect has abilities I will get into later, it also has this basic one button function which is usually only used to influence directional activity and nothing more. Honestly, you barely use this here anyway. Spec Ops The Line has this feature too, but to the extent of painting an enemy for your squad to focus on. As this game is more narratively driven, it's really a hit and miss here at times, but you do find yourself using this one. The issue I have with this feature in games is generally that it's extremely inconsequential. Most of the time you can run through a whole game and never use it, as the player character never has to rely on their teammates to get through sections of a level. The standard AI is usually competent enough to follow you and shoot the things you need it to anyway. While this feature can add a lot to a squad experience, when it's the only feature, it kind of just leaves you wanting. Plenty of games, particularly third person ones, have teammates that have an array of abilities that you can use to change the tide of battle. Sometimes the player character has access to these themselves, sometimes not. Usually this involves holding down a button, which will slow down time in game to allow you to press additional buttons to select exactly what you want to do. Mass Effect is one of the standouts, with you not only able to swap which weapon your ally is using, but select which ability they will use. While this was originally a console game, it's apparent this feature works far better on PC, as there are usually quite a lot of abilities to choose from. 
I know I've accidentally made Garrus use a shield as opposed to an overload. You can alter the settings here to your playstyle though, and have squad mates never use abilities unless you tell them, have them use abilities at their own whim, or purely use defensive abilities so you can save the aggressive ones for when you need help. The recent Guardians of the Galaxy game has a much more simplified version of this. The button you select first allows you to pick the squad mate and then the ability. Because there are only a max of 4 abilities per character, and only 4 on the squad mates, this can be comfortably assigned to a controller for more fluid prompts. Unlike Mass Effect, where you have a wider variety of allies to choose from, so there is a metagame of selection from the get-go. Guardians has the same staple team, so each ally has its own function, although many of the abilities end up just being some sort of variation of massive damage to a target. This is why uh, Groot's the best character in that game. This is largely the more common option you see out there. The ones that do it best slow down time without taking away from the flow of the encounter, but it does beg the question as to if PC is just generally better for this type of stuff, as it allows for greater control. Taking this a step further, some games have your decisions play out live, for lack of a better word. A lot of my examples here fit with the one button push too. Furthermore, these squad commands usually consist of orders you can bark at them, or multiple options that can change how gameplay actually works, rather than a point A to B type thing. I think the key here additionally, is that some of these games require more cooperation, as you can't go it alone. I'm gonna start with Ghost Recon. Future Soldier has a lot of flashy in-game cutscenes that I'm sure are there to buffer load times, However, I want to point out that the breaches, the climbing walls, and everything in between do add a sense of unity to this game. The main part I'd like to discuss with Ghost Recon, though, are the sync shots. Whether you do it through your scope or through the eyes of your drone, you have the capacity to paint out a max of four targets for you and your squad to take down. Either you can participate, or have the three squad mates do it themselves at your command. While this is still a single button, it requires at least some level of planning to execute rather than pushing a button and forgetting. Future Soldier specifically does have the weird dissonance where you're not the leader of your own team though, so the fact that decisions are left to you seems like a weird choice. Now, the game I planned this whole video around though is Republic Commander. Which opened my eyes to the idea of commanding a team outside of turn-based combat. This game includes a variety of options, but I think the key here is that, on your own, you notice the lack of support, and the game tries to remind you of that, to instill a sense of comfort when they're there. I could talk about this game for ages, so I'll get to the point, and save my other thoughts for a future video perhaps. Commando has four base commands you can issue. Make them secure and defend a specific point, make them search and destroy, and they will go out on their own, form up, which keeps them by you, and cancel a command. There's nothing super fancy here, but it is helpful to keep them alive if you decide to run off on your own. The most unique thing here though is the ability to plant your men at key points with certain weapons and have them access vehicle turrets and supply stores. While they are preset locations, you're usually given enough options that will come into play during more tedious sections. Once a man is in position, he's locked off unless you cancel the command. I think this can become especially interesting when splicing doors is concerned, as you are able to do all the things they can. Need to hack a terminal for a minute? If you're low on ammo, and because your squad doesn't run out, sometimes a good option is to stick them all in entrenched positions and make yourself vulnerable instead. While not perfect, it is a concept I'd like to see explored more, as that game is still one of the most fun I've ever had in an FPS. Any important part of a cooperative experience, or one where you command a squad, is how the game handles death. You have the default, where your death means game over for everyone, but most squad based games include some type of reviving mechanic, but how much does this actually add to the experience? A lot of games feature a pretty samey revive mechanic. When you get hit, you go down. You can usually crawl around a bit, and eventually one of your team will come and get you. In most of these games though, the down is tied to you alone, and your team can't actually die, so they're happy to run in to get you at no expense of their own. Most modern military shooters I've mentioned thus far do it like this. 
While it's nice knowing your squad can't die because you don't run into bullshit deaths as often, the squad kinda ends up just acting as a buffer to your own misfortunes. Mass Effect kinda has the opposite. You die when you lose your health, but your squad will go down. Either you can use your ability to revive them, or complete the encounter and they will get back on their feet afterwards. When your squad can die however, it's usually a game of, can they get me before they also die? In your down states, you usually have a moment to get into a better spot, but sometimes you don't have that option. In Halo 5 Guardians, they add a benefit of giving you and the other character an overshield when the revive is completed, but that game's issue is with everything leading up to it, not what happens after. While there is a prompt to speed up the revive attempt, you can't actually delay it, and the AI in that game love to get themselves into the same terrible situation you got yourself into. In Republic Commando, when a squad mate is down, the other members usually won't revive them on their own until an encounter is over. However, you can force them to in the heat of battle if you think you can cover them. When you're downed, you have three options. Reload the last checkpoint, force the squad to risk their lives to revive you, or let them hold out and see if they can handle things on their own. Each comes with its risks and rewards. Sometimes I like to see if they can handle things on their own. But obviously, if you're in the heat of battle, you don't really want to wait 5 in real life minutes to get back to the game. I appreciate the more thorough options here, and would like to see it implemented in the Come in 3 8. I think Delta Squad has been eliminated. Now, I won't talk about characterization specifically here, as I wanted to focus on gameplay elements that support good characters. In most of these cases, anyway. Most games are primarily focused on the relationships and developments between your team, so feature downtime where you get to talk with them, or see them hang out with one another. Sometimes key beats in the game are formed during these sections. Sometimes the make or break between your team can happen here in fact. Guardians has you back on your ship between missions, usually to follow up character arcs, include funny moments and focus on the future. There isn't anything crazy here, but it's a nice inclusion as it allows the player to wind down just like the crew is. Mass Effect is notably the prime example of a game where off the battlefield is just as important as on, if not more so. A key part of those games is building relationships and making decisions about how you all fit together. Personally, hanging out on the Normandy is one of my favourite parts of Mass Effect. Finding a romantic partner, going on a friend date, or just learning more about these fascinating people really help when it comes to the bigger decisions you have to make during the missions. Now, not all games can have this, as it requires significant time devoted to writing, and those extra sections need to be entertaining enough on their own. In this instance, I think Guardians is a good model to look at, where the sections on the Milano don't overstate their welcome. Games can take this another rung up, however, and I think a game like Chernobyl Light is a great example of how you can ingrain your allies into all facets of the game. For those that haven't played it, the premise is you scale the exclusion zone for clues on your missing wife, while you build and look after a team to help you for your final heist. Now there is a lot of stuff here you will see with other games. You are more than capable of not taking on certain people into your team, like Mass Effect, and in fact, most of the gameplay you're on your own. However, it's the in-between that is extremely important here. At your base of operations, you use the resources you acquire to help build a comfortable living space, heal your companions, and prepare for your next outing. However, how much effort you put in here can affect your teammates' loyalty, and they can leave if dissatisfied enough, or even die. Making separate rooms for everyone, increasing the production of clean air, putting in some decorative plants, and things for your companions to do to pass the time, both affect the gameplay and your sense of making these people feel at home. While you're out on a mission, you can also send them out on their own to acquire resources for weapons or for new things to build, or medicine. Each task has its own risk and you need to weigh up their survivability, that of which you can do later. A smaller detail which adds to the immersion of your companions affecting your experience is the way the game deals with skill points. In order to learn new skills, you must redeem them with a companion between missions, where they will train you to learn said skill. Each new person you bring in can offer new skills for you to learn. I usually get tired of generic skill trees as they are over convoluted and are just a way to drag out the experience while halting the progression for you to stare at a menu. In this game, it's an aspect of building your relationships, and as an RPG, it really helps immerse you in the choices you make. I think something we can learn from this game is how the metagame can be more entwined into the gameplay experience, 
rather than having it sit on the sidelines. This wasn't the most cohesive rundown of all these games. However, as someone who's always pining for an experience where you get to be a part of a team and having greater control over the fate of yourself and them. I'm sure there's plenty I've missed, so let me know what you've played that gives these same vibes, and what you'd like to see a game try and attempt. Until then, 